Welcome to NTN Nightly. I'm Huma Dimark. This edition's top stories. Early childhood sector to undergo phased reopening. Local cruise sector service providers enthusiastic about resumption of calls to the island. And the local emergency medical personnel are trained to operate advanced equipment donation. The Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations, through its Early Childhood Services Unit, has been working collaboratively with local health authorities to ensure the safe reopening of the early childhood sector on the island. Officers from the Department of Environmental Health have been conducting island-wide inspections of the various early childhood centers to ensure compliance to the guidelines provided in collaboration with the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. The early childhood sector will reopen on a phased basis, with all approved private sectors resuming operations on Tuesday, 6 April 2021. Government-operated centers will reopen their doors on Monday, 19 April 2021. Only centers which have met the approved guidelines and demonstrate a sense of readiness to receive children in a safe and conducive environment have been granted approval to reopen. The Early Childhood Services Unit commends the administrators and staff of the various early childhood centers for their patience and efforts in ensuring that all the stipulated protocols are in place at their centers to ensure the safety and well-being of the children in their care, as well as the staff and parents. The unit welcomes the reopening of the center and urges all early childhood practitioners to remain alert and vigilant and ensure total adherence and maintain all of the COVID-19 guidelines which govern the operations of the centers. Teachers and educators in early childhood education from across the Karakums community are involved in a four-week training workshop to ensure their capacity to deliver high-quality distance learning experiences for young children. More from Karakum News Times to Sankin English Francis. The workshop commenced on Wednesday, the 17th of March, through a partnership among the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, the CARICOM Secretariat, and the Caribbean Child Development Center of the University of the West Indies, UWI Open Campus. Concluding on the 7th of April, the free online workshop explores topics including how to help parents to support their children during home-based learning, expectations for teachers and children, the appropriate time frame for children's attention span, and how to keep children engaged during online learning. Speaking during the virtual launch event, Dr. Laurette Bristol, Program Manager for Human Development at the CARICOM Secretariat, underscored the importance of high-quality early childhood education in the growth and development of individuals. Regionally, a great deal of attention has been paid to the upper levels of the basic education sector, particularly the examination classes. And we all know why, because there was anxieties around how do we continue education to fulfill transitions for to higher levels of learning. But we also know, and you know as well, because as practitioners in the early childhood development sector, you understand deeply and appreciate that the ECD, the early learning years, is a foundation. And we know that a house is only as strong as its foundation. Dr. Farrell Khan, Program Specialist for Education at UNESCO's Cluster Office in the Caribbean, in her remarks said UNESCO is taking steps to prioritize early childhood education and care in the COVID-19 response. This training is conceptualized to provide hands-on skills for frontline practitioners. We have identified early childhood development or ECD as a priority area based on a number of considerations. First of all, from the global and regional experience in the overall COVID-19 response, the early childhood education and care sector has not been adequately prior prioritized in spite of its fundamental significance to one's life. Fully aware of this fact, UNESCO has recently organized high-level and technical dialogues 
to advocate for early childhood development and care as a priority area for COVID-19 response. Speaking at the opening, head of the Caribbean Child Development Center and director of the Consortium for Social Development and Research of the University of the West Indies, Ms. Cecile Minot, said the university is pleased to be associated with the incredible partnership with CARICOM and UNESCO. And it was only too much our pleasure for us to say yes, we would definitely be able to do this with you. One of the big surprises, we had to, had to keep it within 40, and you will understand why when your facilitators speak to you, because it is a workshop setting. It is not a seminar. It's not one where you will be talking. You, this is very participatory. In the fine style that Open Campus operates, because we are an online institution, we've been able to work together and come up with skills and strategies as to how we could do this. So you are in very capable hands with my colleagues as they share with you some strategies and some things to help you in your environment, in your different countries. March 16th, 2020, registered the last commercial cruise call to St. Lucia amid the global COVID-19 pandemic. Tourism authorities recently announced preparation for the possible reintroduction of the cruise ships to Port Castries this summer. While efforts for seamless operation are being made by local authorities, noting that dormancy of the sector over the last year has left a deep impression, much hope has been expressed by ancillary service providers. More in this report. Noting the last cruise call on March 16, 2020, there has been minimal activity at Port Castries. The announcement of St. Lucia's preparation for assumption of operation within the cruise sector in mid-July has been noted by ancillary service providers who state that stagnation of cruise activity over the last 12 months have left them cash-strapped, but optimistic. We may have one tour going out based on hotel only. So the cruise industry has affected us tremendously. And um, we, would, we are excited to hear that um, soon, that it will be, we will be starting up again. I think it's gonna be a great thing for us here because a lot of St. Lucians, including myself and the persons I work with, we, we this is what we do. We are beyond elated and um, everyone is um, anticipating that as soon as this happens, things are not necessarily going to return to normalcy, but at a minimum, we are going to find ourselves creeping towards that. So we are excited. The last few months, feels like an entire year, was a, indeed a challenge. And so the news and the efforts of the command center, the Ministry of, of, of Health, and tourism as well as the government of St. Lucia in general. The efforts have been phenomenal and commendable. We lost a lot of our business that normally came in during the period, um, especially during the winter months, where it's our busiest period. But it has a significant impact on everybody, including Cox and & Company, and a lot of people who benefit from the cruise industry as well. And we hope that things will um, turn around, and I'm very confident that the future looks strong for the industry, and we should see cruise ships returning during the summer, and then the winter season will pick up. From all indications, next year is looking to be a fairly strong year, and 2023 is going to be an even stronger year for the cruise industry. Taxi drivers, although certified for operation, have had little to no income over the months, expressing what seeing a vessel return to Port Castries would be like. My name is uh, Constantius Francois. I'm the vice president of Holiday Taxi. I'm indeed elated to hear the, the return of the cruise sector. The cruise ship industry is very important to our, our shareholders, and for some of them, that's the only place they earn a dollar is at the cruise ship. And uh, I think you would uh, understand how difficult it has been for the past year. The St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority is a major ancillary service provider to the cruise sector. The hauling of waste from the port to the disposal site is critical for continued operations and the environment overall. Managing Director Justin Seeley expressed his views on the advent of cruise tourism. The St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority's operating budget depends on the head tax to the tune of about 35 to 40% of that budget. 
with that shortfall, which equates to about $400,000 per month, the authority was severely limited in what could have been undertaken. This resulted in lack of remediating of illegal dumps, removal of derelict vehicles, and other activities like that. With the reopen of the cruise industry, these activities could be undertaken again. With Celebrity Millennium scheduled to make her initial voyage of the season in mid-July, a committee has been established to chart the way forward on welcoming the return of cruise tourism and minimizing any possible risk of COVID-19 to local communities. It must be noted that the health and safety of the nation is of paramount interest and that cruise visitors will not be permitted to certified sites and attractions on the days designated for locals and on-island guests to proactively avoid commingling. With the cruise sector impacted, thousands of jobs have been compromised. Consultation commenced last week with positive input from the Vendors Association and will continue with all subsectors. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. The Substance Abuse Advisory Council Secretariat recently held a panel discussion to educate the populace on the impact of alcohol abuse and other controlled substances. This comes after a stream of social media posts depicting the high level of alcohol use and dependence among St. Lucians. Statistics from the World Health Organization on the global consumption of alcohol indicates St. Lucia's consumption levels are above the global average. And if you look at alcohol per capita consumption in 15 and over in liters of pure alcohol, <coughs> St. Lucia males 26.1, the global average 19.4, females 9.3, the global average 7 pointing out that we are consuming more alcohol than the global mm. average. Mm. In other words, we are drinking more than other, other people in, the, in, in this world. In addition to that, people who abstain, about 50% of solutions actually do, um, are currently using and 50% are not, 50.3% are not uh, abstaining. The global average is actually about 35% of, of, of people that are currently um, consuming. Dr. Stephen King says the statistics show 69.9% of the male population practice heavy episodic drinking or binge drinking. That number is 33% in the female population. People need to understand that how you drink, how much you drink, how often you drink is crucial for your health, short term and long term. Mm -hmm. And the multiple ramifications, we're talking about physical disease, mental disease, mm -hmm. um, social disease, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because of, 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 your, of drinking. Mm -hmm. During the discussion, it was highlighted that the use of alcohol can lead to impaired judgment or reckless behavior. Corporal Ann Joseph says, as it pertains to crime, being under the influence of alcohol is not an excuse. I think sometimes people believe that you're going to get a, a hall pass, so to speak. Mm -hmm. If you use alcohol, the police believe you're drunk. They'll just say, oh, mm -hmm. that person was drunk. Mm -hmm. There's no excuse in law. Mm -hmm. It actually makes it um, worse for you okay. if you mm -hmm. are intoxicated because mm -hmm. there are sentencing guidelines that um, there are aggravating mm -hmm. factors mm -hmm. like the abuse of alcohol. Mm -hmm. It will actually adversely affect mm -hmm. you. Dr. Naomi Jabat is consultant psychiatrist at the National Wellness Center says while treatment is imperative to those who suffer from alcoholism, there are barriers. So a lot of people, they're comfortable with their use of alcohol and they don't think it's a problem for them. So you think it's a problem because you see the way it's been affecting their family and everybody else. But as far as they're concerned, they're okay, they're comfortable with it, they like alcohol. And I saw a lot of videos that were going around on WhatsApp after the alcohol was released after we had the two weeks stint of no alcohol mm -hmm. and you could see people like they were so happy and insulting everybody and everything like they don't realize that they have a problem everybody else does but they don't realize the panel discussion aired on ntn analyzed the impact of alcohol abuse from a medical psychological and legal perspective Platinum Ambulance Services, a leading specialist private ambulance company in the United Kingdom, has deployed a training team to St. Lucia to complement their donation of ambulances and medical equipment to the St. Lucia Fire Service. Emergency medical technicians began training with them on Wednesday, 31st March, 2021, at the Coco Palm Hotel. Local Fire Service Chief is Joseph Joseph. Platinum um, Ambulance Service. Um, donated a uh, consignment of equipment uh, and uh, they are also donating three 
ambulances um, to St. Lucia and the equipment on board is um, a little more advanced than what we already have in St. Lucia. So um, the, the objective is to provide the necessary training for um, our EMTs to use that advanced equipment and of course to boost um, the, the efficiency in our response to emergencies. Paramedic and director at Platinum Ambulance Services, Sophia Burrell, says training for the local fire service EMTs will primarily constitute medical training for trauma, obstetrics, illness, and the use of the advanced equipment that they are donating. Uh, we're bringing over equipment, predominantly the most important bit of equipment that's so exciting. It's called a Life Pack 12 and it uh, helps you so that you can do EKGs or ECGs as we call them in the UK. We, take, we look at 12 different aspects of your heart and diagnostically we can tell if you're about to have a heart attack or if you're currently having a heart attack or if you're not going to have a heart attack, hopefully. Um, it uh, also um, has got an AED in it as well, so it's got enough electricity in it to light up an entire football stadium for two seconds so that we can stop your heart and hope that the natural rhythm will start to take over. Um, it can uh, measure your oxygen saturation levels, it can take your blood pressure, it can do your end tidal CO2, and we're going to teach uh, your students how to recognize all the different rhythms that we're going to pick up. So it's going to be quite a long week for them, but hopefully they're going to become top guns when they finish. Additional training includes emergency driver training and community first responder training, of which the Royal St. Lucia Police Force will also benefit. Irenaeus Henry, like the other 20 trainees, look forward to the coming days of impartation. It's not that we, we are not proficient in our skills, but most of the skills, since we are using most, mostly American equipment, and the equipment we are getting there are sort of British, and also the, the instructors are British, so most of the skills we are learning from a British perspective. So that's just, that's just it. And we are learning some more advanced techniques. Okay, it's not that, that we are not all that proficient in, in what we do, it's just that we are learning more advanced techniques to make us more effective in our, in our duties as, as EMTs and to bring us up to an advanced level. The training will culminate next week Friday. The generosity of Platinum Ambulance Services is made possible through the High Commission of St. Lucia in London. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Novella Quayol. One of the eight universally recognized rights of the consumer is the right to satisfaction of basic needs. This means that every consumer has the right to basic goods and services that guarantee survival. This right includes adequate food, clothing, shelter, healthcare, education, water, and sanitation. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Quayol. Merci, Ota, Homo. Monsieur, Madame, Department, Kine West Cosability, Bwe Formation, en Gouvernement, Set Le GIS. A sobe pi Televisión Nacional pi a NTN, ka pwisato nouvel a kweol. Pwisato Primus Hutchinson. Gouvernement ja pwen decisyon pou limite a souse neditan ki pi a ka IWST ouve pou publik la ale vini di wwa finis masimen pak la. Sa se par konsekans di de gwe ka korona ki ka augmente depi la ni yon holide a da yon finis masimen a set le si. C'est pour ça que le gouvernement a établi cet arrangement pour ces éditeurs qui peuvent continuer à opérer à la COFIO. Selon le chef officier des affaires communication en bureau du premier ministre de l'Ecy, Nicole MacDonald, commencé jeudi le 1er en mois d'avril 2021, la COFIO a commencé depuis à 7h soir pour 4h du bon matin. Vendredi le 2 avril, ça c'est vendredi 5, il a commencé depuis 7h soir pour 4 heures bon matin. Et comme dit Gloria, Kofia a commencé à 6 heures au soir pour 4 heures bon matin. Dimanche pas, le 4e en mois d'avril, Kofia a commencé à 3 heures après-midi pour 4 heures euh, le demain bon matin. Et lundi pas, le 5e en mois d'avril, Kofia a 3 heures après-midi pour 4 heures le bon matin. Et mardi, le 6e avril, il a vu 
pour 9 heures soir pour 4 heures le bon matin. Selon McDonald, la principale raison, c'est pour essayer de réduire la société de COVID pour ne pas se manger en pays. Il ajoute que le gouvernement est très concerné pour préserver la santé du peuple. C'est et pour essayer de ménager des grandes activités qui ont pris un coup en pays. Le chef officier de communication dit aussi que le pays a pris un coup de gagne de monde qui a comblé en pagal à plusieurs places en cette ci Tous les finissements de semaine qui ont eu un holiday. McDonald fait comprendre que c'est seulement pour nous ça. C'est seulement de qui nous cais ni un bon titan et puis la famille nous examine nous c'est si nous toutes euh, coopérer ensemble pour aider baisser à ce si quantité cas covid qui a cette ici alors il qu'a crié à ce peuple il pour coopérer et puis on a l'autre et gouvernement aussi pour faire ça pour faire ça un succès il plaide pour cette ici un comporter coyo qu'on cette ici qui ni bonne responsabilité et qui 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 plus concerné de protection santé yo et ça c'est santé yo même et cette ici généralement semaine qui passe les autorités touristiques cette ici ont annoncé préparation pour vivre euh, garder la possibilité pour bateau touristique retourner à cette ici c'était depuis le 16 mois de mars 2020 que le dernier bateau touristique commercial a visité le pays durant la pandémie Covid. -là. Pendant les autorités qui ont travaillé pour que l'opération du bateau touristique retourne sans les sauver, mais ces services services qui dépendent seulement à son industrie touristique, là, ont pris un mauvais coup de chot -chot, comme le secteur touristique là, a trouvé des cambrelés pour plus de l'année. Sinon, ces divers uh, services là comme chauffeur taxi avec les autres et on dit que situation ça là te qui te poche vide qu'on poche joie grande chauffeur taxi euh rester sans un salaire pour plus qu'il y en ait et aussi autorité de management ont dit à cette ici qui a pour tirer un service très important pour les bateaux pour les bateaux touristiques à pays comme c'est yo qui a déposé tous ces ordi hors ces bateaux ça là et qui ont aussi été souffert. Bateau touristique Celebrity Millennium, j'en ai plein en place pour visiter cette ici. Ça, c'est en mi-temps mois de juillet. Là, j'en ai un comité qui est en place pour bien venir ces bateaux touristiques là à cette ici. Encore. Et en même du temps, pour réduire sérieusement à ce possibilité maladie COVID pour ne pas affecter ces communes pays. Pour ça, ça là, les, les touristes, pas qu'ils ont visité place qui est certifiée en ces jours qui peut payer à même qu'à place ça là. Décision, j'ai commencé aussi. Et puis, association Les Wivendez, concernant le secteur touristique là, et comment est-ce que ben, ça a affecté la vie économique. Yo. Et bien, avant de finir, une petite nouvelle là, les gens qui veulent faire un test um, COVID, ou si vous voulez voyager, vous pouvez faire ça pour faire ça pas plus tard, à 11h bon matin pour faire possible pour ce monde à faire travailler comme de la tête. Le ministère de la Santé a informé le public que si l'éditeur est ouvert à ce clinique, ça a déjà changé. Et que pour noter que si l'éditeur qui a ouvert, il y a un finissement à ce moment pas classé en Gozile, pour les cliniques Gozile, vendredi, le deuxième mois d'avril, pour les cliniques qui ont ouvert 8h matin pour midi après-midi. Samedi, le troisième en mois d'avril, il a ouvert 8h bon matin pour juste 3h uh, après-midi. Et dimanche, le quatrième, il a ouvert pour les cliniques, il a ouvert 8h bon matin pour uh, midi après-midi. Et lundi, le sixième jour en mois d'avril, il a ouvert 8h bon matin pour midi. Bon, pour les cliniques, les uh, respiratory cliniques, les uh, vieux forts, il n'y a pas qu'à ouvrir vendredi, il n'y a pas qu'à fermer. Mais samedi, le troisième en mois d'avril, il n'y a pas ouvert 8 heures au matin pour juste 3 heures après-midi. Et dimanche, le 4, il n'y a pas qu'à fermer, ça c'est dimanche pas. Et vendredi, le sixième jour en mois d'avril, il n'y a pas ouvert depuis 8 heures au matin pour juste midi après-midi. Les gens qui veulent faire test pour voyager, en ces jours-là, il n'y a pas qu'à pour visiter la clinique, il n'y a pas qu'à 8 heures au matin pour juste 11 heures à bon matin pour faire possible pour ce monde à faire travailler comme doit être. Je commande de faire noter que la uh, clinique là, la respiratory clinique là, à la Clary, 
à la clairière uh, aussi qu'il reste fermé du en finissement si maintenant si maintenant pas que là alors tout le monde qui veut ces services là il faut aller gozeler et eh ben en vie fort um, l'hôpital de Nuri ex Sofia qui continue comme la coutume et c'est comme ça notre pour notre nouvelle là on va remercier au temps pour garder mon cabo invitation pour chaîne puis moi encore c'est dire conserver la vie n'ai pas cette autre nouvelle en croyant la présent mon café pour cette heure Merci à Peel Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the Government of St. Lucia Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Homer Dimar.